Hi folks and welcome to the next video in the series of Open Indiana and ZFS and here we're going to install the operating system and configure a bit of the networking. Don't worry too much that the screen is actually a big size here um, so small text on the video because I'll be putting these commands in the video description for you so don't panic too much it's more important that you get an overview on the video of what's happening. Now, I'm actually using a USB installer here, but if you're not used to using these installers and creating the USB sticks, you might be more comfortable with the CD-based installers. Um, the reason I say that is because for the USB installers, not only have you got to get the USB image, but you've also got to get the one gig header file, and you've got to concatenate that on top of the USB image and then write that out to a stick which can be quite infuriating when you're not used to it. So you may wish to stick with the CD installers until uh, you've got a bit of practice in on that. The installers themselves are dual 32-64-bit architecture. Um, they will detect what architecture you're running when they start. Uh, what else is there to say about the installers? Um, I've got a feeling that I'm about to miss something. <laughs> um, I'm running the text-based installer. Uh, which is pretty much designed for servers. Uh, you can use the live CDs to install not only servers but also clients as well. So you can install an Open Indiana client. Um, so having said that, I'm just going to power up the machine and let's rock and roll. Um, I've got two 80 gig hard disks. One is currently in, the other is standing by because in the next video I'm going to do the uh, mirroring of the boot partition for you. But for now, here we go, ProLiant microserver, and we're going to start from the USB. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> um, I'm also going to do a bit of uh, fiddling around at the end. Uh, if my memory serves me well, we're going to see just where we go. And that's loading Grub, so that's loading from the USB stick. And here we go with some options. The first option we're going to face is the language. The default is number 47, which is US English. We're going to go for 46, which is UK English. And it'll be there in a moment. Honest. <laughs> <coughs> uh, one of the other things I'm going to do is wait for, we've got a screen full of text and then lock off the formatting. You can see this has come up with 151A8, uh, which is hipster. 64-bit. Um, hipster is the code name they've given this revision. Uh, done mounting text install image. There we go. I'm just going to lock off the focus. Uh, default is 47. We're going to go for 46, which is UK English. Uh, we have a number of uh, layouts for different languages. Default is 7, which is English, so we're just going to press return and accept that. And that, once it's given a few more seconds to settle down, will then ask us what we're going to do. And uh, we've got a number of options on the menu when it comes up. <laughs> Boy, this is boring. Here we go. Number one is install Open Indiana. We've also got options to install additional drivers, drop to a shell, terminal type, currently sun color, or reboot. We're just going to take default one, which is install Open Indiana. Now the installation screen itself, uh, you can see this is nice and colourful blue. What you can't see down here, because it's in grey, are the function key options. And you've got a few options to handle it if the function keys are not working. We're going to use F2, which is to continue. Uh, note that uh, sometimes if you reach that point and you haven't got your network interface hooked up, you may receive some errors that it can't contact the DHCP server and those errors will obliterate the um, function key options, but they are still active. My advice is to have um, a network cable plugged in and a DHCP server local just to help with the network setup. Now here, um, the up and down arrows um, are active and the F2 will run with whatever we're going to continue with. We have two drives, we have the USB stick here at the top and we have the hard drive there showing up as 74.5 gig and we're going to just ma uh, move down, cursor down to that one and press F2. It's telling us what's on it. Uh, we've already got a Solaris uh, image on it 
and there's a Solaris 2 image 0.9 on the USB so it's telling us what's on there before we go any further. So we're going to select the 80 gig hard drive and F2 to continue. Right, it's allowing us partition options but I'm just going to go up arrow and tell it to use the whole disk and F2 to continue. Now it's going to ask us our computer name, we're just going to go with Open Indiana. I'm going to cursor, cursor down to automatically configure the connection for us and then press F2 to continue. Uh, note you can only really select automatic if you have uh, a network cable in and you're hooked up to a DHCP server. Regions, we're in UTC GMT so we're just going to F2 to that. Um, date and time, if you wanted to change it, we're currently current, so that's 7.44. Uh, no, in fact, we're 8.50. So uh, we're hour 8, um, I'll go one ahead. Month 7, day 10, that's right, F2 to continue. Now I'm just going to go test this, test this. Uh, I'm just going to fill these in, test this, test this. Here we've got our root password uh, that, we could, that we're going to put in and we're going to create one user account. Uh, the real name isn't really used, the username however is. Um, and I've just got test this as a password for everything. Right, so we're going to, to continue with this. Um, it's going to ask us to check this, review the settings. Um, you can use F3 to go back but we're just going to commit and install Open Indiana like this. Now. Um, what I'll say while this is installing is um, you cannot log on to a console or an SSH session as root. You won't be able to do it. Even if you're using the correct password, it will reject the logon. Um, it won't even confirm that it's the right or wrong password, it'll just reject it. The only way that you can get into the system is to log on as the user that you've created and when you've got a connection then use the SU command to drop through to root and then you'll be able to do various things. <coughs> so that's uh, roughly, uh, that's another heads up on that. <laughs> um, there's a few options that are going to be available in here. In the description box I'm going to put a number of things. Uh, what, what is it? <coughs> Let's bring up my notes on the other screen. I'm going to give you um, a link that goes to an Open Indiana wiki which is installing Open Indiana and uh, the wiki on that particular page uh, what does that take you to? There's some specific information on that and I'm not there but while this happens to be installing I'll just hit that link and see why it was that I decided to give you that link uh, oh yes, that link happens to contain the instructions for uh, the USB uh, installation, uh, how to concat concatenate the files. So the first link in the description box will be uh, a link to that instruction. The next link is a link to the subscription for the Open Indiana uh, mailing group. And that's uh, where I get my primary support from. There's a number of people on that group and a lot of them are quite helpful. Um, Sometimes you have to wait a bit for people to come back to you. That's the nature of uh, a group where people are just getting together to, uh, to support this. Um, after that is a list of the instructions that I'm about to use um, and that you'll need to be aware of. Um, and also there's some instruction on NWAM. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is disable NWAM. Now NWAM pretty much handles, uh, if you were running a client, um, NWAM would handle you moving between different network sources, wired network, wireless and all the rest of that jazz. Um, but we're going to disable that because on a server it doesn't make much sense. So we're just going to kill that. Um, then we're going to program up the interface with a static IP address. Um, so you can go through these commands as and when you wish. Um, just reviewing them. <coughs> yeah. Uh, you're going to have to get used to the network interface names. Uh, your network interface names may differ, um, especially if you're using um, a proper decent server as opposed to the kind of uh, PC server that I'm using here. Uh, where are we at the minute? We're on 9 minutes 54 seconds. 
around 77% transferring content. And uh, we're nearly there. So you can see roughly how quick this is to install. When we reboot, it will go through a service list and it will compile those services and it should only do that really on the first uh, reboot and also uh, I think it may do it after certain upgrades, I can't remember. But uh, there you go on that one, we'll experience that in a moment. <coughs> uh, I think that's all the pertinent information you need for the moment. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. Nice weather we're having this time of year. <laughs> it's Britain. It's raining. What do you expect? <laughs> oh boy. Yes. So here we go. 93%. Nearly there. 98%. Completing transfer process. It may stay here for another minute. Uh, uh, bum, 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 bum. Oh, what a lovely life. <laughs> you know, I should have prepared some jokes to tell you in the meantime. But there you go, I suppose. We're currently 11 minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, this is probably going to run for a bit longer. <coughs> uh, some of these uh, commands are going to have to be run as root, so it just makes uh, sense to SU as we get into the box. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're also going to have to get used to, in another video, uh, in the next video, the hard drive notation, which is controller, um, channel, which comes up as a T, uh, a third letter, which is a D, which is really only used for sub, um, sub channels on SCSI, and then slices. So you're going to have to get used to the C, D, S, the C, T, D, S notation. Um, you might want to read up on it. Um, I'll see what I can give you in the appropriate video on the next video. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, yeah, this is taking more than a minute. Hard drive's going bananas. I think it's nearly there. I hope so. Uh, 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes. <laughs> There we go. The installation of Open Diana. The installation of Open Indiana has completed successfully. I should take my time on this. Now we have an option down here of reboot. So I'm going to press F8. Reboot. I'm just going to give that a few moments. <coughs> Open Indiana reboot initiated by console. Remove the USB. And this should now boot to the hard drive. Uh, that was an error message, don't worry too much about it. Um, right, we are now booting from the hard drive. Open Indiana 151A8, 64 bits. Uh, loading SMF descriptions. This is what it will do for the first time and uh, possibly on some upgrades. So this will, uh, this is taking its time. subsequent boots will be faster and we're going to do one in a bit after we've configured the channel after we've configured the um, interface oh boy but I think the uh, good part about this is you're seeing the whole thing and the time involved in the whole thing um, from start to finish here to getting a, a box up and running which uh, looks like we're going to come in at under 15 minutes possibly. Um, it's going to do this again for some more service descriptions in a moment. Uh, host name open Indiana. The box is now in theory up. Configuring devices. Loading SMF service descriptions. Five of five. That should be it. We should then get a splash screen. Where are we actually up from this point? Ah, we're up from this point. 
So we can now log in as the user, which is test. And we're now going to uh, log in, we're going to SU to super user. So we're now as super user. Um, uh, if we give um, if adm um, space uh, show hyphen addr uh, if uh, no <laughs> what the heck is it ip adm show addr ip adm space show hyphen addr and that is showing us our current interfaces and note our interface name it's picked up dhcp it's picked up a local address which is class 24 class c BGE0 is our interface name on this box, BGE0. So the first thing we're going to do is SVC service ADM, SVC ADM. We're going to disable NWAM. Would have if I could type. So that is now, uh, we've now disabled NWAM. That's also disabled BGE0 for um, that. Uh, just press return to that and if we ask for a show ADDR you will notice that BGE0 has vanished. So we're going to uh, SVC ADM space enable uh, network slash physical default. We're still not there. Uh, DL ADM uh, show phys. Uh, DLADM show phys will show you the physical links that are there. Um, it can show us at the moment that BGE0 is there. Its speed is 1000, it's full, full duplex, and device name BGE0. Um, so what we're going to do is IP ADM create um, IF BGE0. Uh, <coughs> So we've created that interface. I'm just going to do a, um, an IP show ADR to show you that we still haven't got the interface yet after each of these commands. So now we're going to give it an IP address, IP ADM, create hyphen ADDR. We're going to give a minus capital T static. I'm going to give an address, which in this case is going to be 192.168.0.25. Uh, and it's going to be a class C, so it's slash 24. And it's going to be on the BGE0 interface um, with a V4 address. <coughs> so we've got create address, minus T static. The address is going to be um, minus, uh, the address minus A is going to be 192.168.0.25 on a class C slash 24, and it's going on the BGE0 slash V4 interface. So that's done that. If we show the addresses, you can now see that it is there. It's there, it's static, it's OK, and you can see the address that it's got. That may show disabled. If it shows disabled, that will at least show you what's going on and you can just enable it. Now we've got that, we need to give it a root. Um, so we're just going to give the root command, minus P for persistent, add a root, and it's going to be the default root, which in this case is going to be the address of our router, which is 192.168.0.1. So we're going to add that in. Um, we're also going to run SVC ADM, uh, disable, and we're going to disable the service, which is network IP filter default, would help if I could spell. Right, and as you can see, our address is still there. We're just going to bounce the box to make sure that all this persistent stuff has worked which is in its 6. In fact, I've just missed a command, <laughs> which is for the uh, uh, which is for the DNS. <laughs> now I've got to try and remember what that command is. Um, bear with me a moment, because I'm going to have to, it's a copy, it's a file copy. Um, where am I? I'm going to have to put this in and I'm going to put it in uh, earlier. Um, uh, ah, right, it's a copy command. I'm going to put this in the instructions um, after uh, disabling NWAM. And it is, uh, you'll get it in the description bar. What am I doing? 
So we've logged in as test and we're going back in as root. Uh, we're going to do IP admin show hyphen ADDR. And we can see that it has survived the reboot. We are going to copy uh, CP, uh, etc. Um, switch uh, uh, where is it? No, it's NS switch NS switch dot um, DNS to etc. NS switch dot conf. So we're copying that into a configuration file that it will then use. So at the moment, if I say ping www.google.com, oh, it knows it. Oh, well. <laughs> so at this point, we have a, a, a box with a static IP address. It can resolve names, um, and we should be able to SSH to it. Um, uh, one thing that's in my mind that I've never actually bothered to check is what happens if you disable NWAM. Um, uh, thinking about it. If you're using DHCP, you do not want to disable NWAM thinking about it because that will bugger things up and you won't be able to get an IP address on the interfaces. So only, um, only start on the commands if you actually want to assign a static IP address to the box. Otherwise, if you disable NWAM, then you will, you will have to <laughs> assign a static IP to the box. Ugh. Right, all these things you've got to think about before you start on this. Um, so there you go. Uh, that is the box installed, up and running, and surviving reboots. I'm just going to do another init 6 to make sure that this works. Uh, as you notice, the reboot on this is reasonably fast. So shutdown took 8 seconds. Uh, there we go. And you'll notice that it doesn't bother with the um, doesn't bother with the what doesn't it bother with? <laughs> I've forgotten what it doesn't bother with. Uh, it doesn't bother with the services because it's already scanned them. So hostname open Indiana, and we now have command. We now have hello computer. We now have a login. Give me a login. Thank you. Test. And hopefully at this level, I, uh, IP ADM show hyphen ADDR should still work. And yes, it does. You don't have to be super used to be able to execute that command. So there we are. We now have a box. Static IP address. It is able to resolve. And um, yeah, it's up and running catch you in the next video when we are going to mirror the root partitions. See you then.